Hi everyone, and hi Jamie. Great video on Thursday. If anybody in the audience didn't see it, I recommend you check the link in the doobly-doo. Um, if you didn't see that, I also recommend you check out his video on Saturday, which is outlining a new project called Oxtweet. For those of you that don't know, Oxtweet is a project where, for one week, a variety of Oxford students will be tweeting their lives on specific Twitter accounts. Subjects which are going to have these Twitter accounts include PPE, law, engineering, classics, biomedical sciences, and medicine. So to find out more about that project, check out Jamie's video from Saturday, which will also be in the doobly-doo. Uh, alternatively, search Twitter for hashtag Oxtweet. Also, in your video on Thursday, you asked me the question, what's the most important lesson that I've learned at uni? Now, that's a subject that I could dedicate a whole uh, video to answering, but uh, I think the short answer would be, whilst I've been at uni, I've, re I've had experiences that have made me reevaluate what I do and why I do it. And it's a change which I think came about purely through the tutorial system and having this one-on-one -on -one contact with these experienced academics who have gone through this transition themselves and they've had years of experience to think about these kind of questions and have come to their own personal answers. I feel like I've taken a step further in like, my personal development, if you like, but like I say, this is a very quick answer to a very deep and meaningful question that's very important to ask. So, in the past week in my work, I've been in theoretical physics looking at or starting to look at interacting quantum field theory, whilst in atmospheric physics we've been looking at satellites and observing the Earth, different types of satellite, different types of orbit, and how you go about designing them. Again, it's kind of the real practical side of the course, it's like if you're going to go out and do science, this is what you're going to do. The lecturer actually um, had the best example of spinning something I've ever seen in my life, when he was talking about this project called the Mars Atmosphere Orbiter and how he was working on this project, which unfortunately crashed into the surface of Mars um, because of a miscommunication between the two science teams. And he spun this really embarrassing story by saying that, as a result, I uh, did work on the project which got the first bit of British equipment on Martian soil. I mean, it wasn't in one piece, but, you know. On the social side of things, on Monday I went to a 21st birthday party which was being hosted at a uh, cocktail bar in Oxford before we went out to a club, whilst I also went to a yoga class on Thursday, which is something that's put on by the college welfare officer. So one of the uh, elected positions in the JCR is a welfare officer who's in charge of um, various things which are either designed to boost morale or be somebody to talk to if you're having a tough time. Um, I've never personally had to, to take advantage of the more serious side of the service, but a yoga class is the kind of thing that um, is nice to do in your downtime and it's quite relaxing and it actually means you're going to work better in the future because you're not stressed about everything. So in my last video I asked you guys where in Oxford you'd like me to take my camera next and judging by a couple of responses I got the impression you wanted me to look at the physics department. So physics in Oxford is split between three sites. You've got the atmospheric physics department and the Clarendon laboratory on Parks Road and the Dennis Wilkinson building on Keeble Road. Now starting with the atmospheric physics department, technically it's the atmospheric, oceanic and planetary physics department and it has what you'd expect a department to have really. It's got corridors, offices and a lecture theatre where I have my atmospheric fourth year option lectures. The Clarendon lab is where, amongst other things, uh, Henry Moseley provided the experimental justification for the atomic number. These days it houses research in atomic physics, ultra-cold atoms, biophysics and a couple of other small research groups. It also has a cafe that students can use and a big lecture theatre where you have all your lectures in first and third year and some fourth year options and another smaller one which is where you have your lectures in second year and you may also recognise as being the setting for physics society lectures. The Dennis Wilkinson building, which is named after Sir Dennis Wilkinson, who is a notable nuclear physicist at Oxford, contains research these days for nuclear or particle physics and astrophysics. It also has a cafe and a lecture theatre, which is where I have my full the theoretical physics options lectures in, and houses the undergraduate teaching labs. Now the teaching labs are split by subjects, so there are labs for, again, amongst other things, uh, computing, uh, or programming in other words, optics, which is kind of necessarily dark, and electronics. And that's pretty much it for the physics department. Short of physically sticking my camera into people's offices, that's about as much as I can show you. But um, if you'd like more information about the research which happens, then I highly recommend you check out the Oxford website, which I again put in the doobly-doo. Last but not least, I have a question for you, the audience. Have you decided on a college that you'd like to apply to yet? If so, why? And if not, what are you looking for in an Oxbridge college? Answers that are not St Peter's College will be tolerated, but with heavy judgement. And my question to you, Jamie, is who in your time at Oxford has been your favourite lecturer and why? Looking forward to your video on Thursday, and good luck to everybody who's involved in the Oxtweet project.